folks, it's Scott Halley again. I'm out here at the Concordia Throw Center. Um, pardon the noise from the oncoming traffic and you might even hear a few honks along the way. Uh, we're also out here by the Portland Airport, so you may see or hear some, uh, some aircraft taking off behind me. So anyway, um, today's, uh, today's email um, is from Doug and uh, he says, Scott, seen a lot of videos on, on tips throwing the javelin. Uh, one of the items that doesn't get covered very often is in depth is the penultimate step or the soft step and the block in detail. I'm a master's thrower, 52, last through 52 meters and uh, still a work in progress. Uh, also, notice watching film, some guys with their block actually lift up onto their toe on the hinge over, whereas some guys pretty much block out on the heels and hinge over what do you recommend uh well doug let's let's talk a little bit about the penultimate step uh the penultimate step technically is the uh is the second to last step in the throw so that would be if you're a right-handed thrower coming down on that right on that right foot and then running into the block so the penultimate step is typically or traditionally looked at as that right step um, so, uh, for me, I kind of think uh, if we're going to focus on the penultimate step and how we land on it, well, then we have to sort of back up uh, a step prior to that. And that's that left leg as you take off on the crossover. Um, the penultimate step can contribute to a, a much better hip drive. Um, it can co contribute to a good block and uh, can contribute to the last acceleration coming from your lower half. So for me, if I'm gonna work on my penultimate, I need to back up and take off on that left leg. So as I take off on the left leg, I want to get ready for my right foot. Um, I typically will land on the ball of my foot, uh, just about 45 degree angle. I don't want it to be straight forward, and I certainly don't want it pointing out to the side. I also want to make sure that my knee is flexed so that when I come in for a landing on that right foot, I'm in a good position to drive the hip horizontally forward to my um, throwing direction. So as I take off on that left foot, I want to make sure that I'm going to be in a good position to land on the right. So I don't want to be twisted up here, especially if you're a, a new or a beginner uh, entry level thrower. I want to make sure I'm a little bit more forward, not directly forward, I'm not long jumping here but a little closed off. So my, my left foot is gonna be just about that same 45 degree angle as, I, as my right foot is going to land. So as I take off, nice soft landing. As I land softly on that right foot, I want that knee to be flexed. I want it to be able to roll forward and down. That will bring my foot up off the ground and my hip will now be in a good position to travel horizontally and that will lead me into the block, okay? So we're just talking about what the lower half is doing, but that right foot really sets you up for that sequence, okay? So again, take off about a 45 degree angle on that, on that left foot. As I come down, land softly on that right foot, roll that knee, drive the hip, and then into the block in the direction of your throw. Now, some common mistakes that I see in this. Uh, common mistake number one is I see folks closing themselves off and landing with the foot backwards or sideways and then they're all wrapped up and they're trying to power into um, their throw. That's one mistake. Another mistake is I see that folks gallop, okay, like a horse, off that crossover and then their hips are already forward, there's no room for it to drive, so you're not really contributing to um, an extra burst of energy through the lower half. So we kind of find a common medium in between that. Uh, the other mistake that I often see is um, the distance between the right foot and the left foot block. I want to make sure that I'm contributing force into my block and that it happens um, quickly, powerfully, um, so that that chain reaction goes all the way up through your body so everything is an acceleration into the throw. So, um, I want my left leg to be out getting ready for the block as I land on that right foot. I don't want to be caught in the middle of a stride. What I mean by stride is my right foot lands out in front 
which puts my hip forward. And if my hip is going to drive, it can't be forward of my left hip. So throwers get stuck in between here. Now they're in transition of a stride and there's no time for their hip to drive into the, into the block and then resulting in the throw. So when you take off on that right foot, you got to quickly get your left, uh, excuse me, when you take off on your left foot, you got to quickly get your left foot back into position. So for me, I'm going to try and get that thing in position as I land on the ground. So punch and you can see as I come down, my right foot lands as my left foot is out here ready so I can drive into that hip. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll show you the wrong way and then I'll show you um, the right way, okay? So wrong way is striding, okay? You can also notice there's a difference in rhythm, okay? It's a one, two, three versus um, the correct way, at least in my opinion, the correct way, which is a one, two, three, and it's a roll into that block, okay? Uh, so the next point that I'd like to make about, about that penultimate step is you need to be um, soft enough that you can travel horizontally, okay? So I don't want to land and teeter down onto my block. Likewise, I don't want to be soft here and then extending the leg into the block. I want to make sure that the knee rolls down so the hip can travel forward into my block. Okay, uh, so I guess we covered a little bit on the block there. Um, I, I think we can probably cover the block a little bit more detail in another segment, but um, just for this particular uh, drill, I think of my block as, as I land on that right foot, I want to make sure that left leg is out there ready to go. I don't want to bend the knee. I don't want to have to quickly extend here and in. I want to make sure the leg is out there and I'm driving into it, okay? So, um, so another time we'll cover a little bit more detail in that block. Okay, so the other aspect of this, um, Doug, was, was the hinge over. You were saying that some folks come off the toe as they hinge over versus being flat and hinging over. Um, like I said, we'll cover a little bit more detail in another segment, but I want to make sure when I drive into that block, that my upper body is in a good position to roll over that block, driving my chest to accelerate the javelin. If I allow this hip to lead at all, that's where the energy is going to go. I'm going to have to then make up for that loss with my muscles and really try and catch up to it. I want to make sure that I'm transferring energy from that block up, redirecting it into the javelin. So, okay, so hopefully, Doug, that takes care of your questions. Um, if there's anyone else who'd like to um, have their javelin questions answered uh, online, uh, send me an email, uh, shalley at coachhalley.com or visit my website, www.coachhalley.com.